Please rise and touch the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Today is Monday, January 25th, 2015. The time is 7 p.m. and the regular meeting of Greenberg City Council is called to order. This time I'm requesting all electronic devices to be silenced, please. Roll call, please, Bridget. Blake. Here. Blake. Here. 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 Additions or changes that you can see in the minutes. And if there isn't, I'll entertain a motion to approve them as you receive them. So moved. Second. Motion made by Blake, second by Terry. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank aye. you. Abstain. Okay. Jamie, abstain. Old business, we have one item on it, discussion of the transit merchant ordinance. Um, I did have a conversation with the chamber director to see what would fit their needs, if you will. And as you can see, the list of things we came up with that worked for them, and I thought it would be an improvement for us as well. They passed just last year, Glenn, and I, I didn't like what they did, but uh, sometimes you have lobbyists, you know what happens. The uh, cable companies uh, are now allowed to knock on their vice doors if they so choose to. Besides that, what else is there? According to law, uh, Counselor. Uh, entities that are approved by statute to mm -hmm. knock on doors. Um, cable telecommunications. I believe um, newspaper uh, advertisements, newspaper organizations are permitted by statute, or at least by constitutional common law from the Supreme Court. Um, other than that, I'm not familiar with a specific list. Uh, I know those two types of organizations are approved. <coughs> Really, the major change would be people from outside the county that would not be permitted to, to, to do it unless permitted by a Indiana code. And the businesses who would like to could do it without knocking on doors, put door hangers on, leave you brochure. The only one to be knocking on doors would be the ones who have always done in the past for the non for profits, local non for profits. And one of the last things was setting a timeline uh, from no earlier than 9 a.m. no later than 6 p.m. And one of the things that we other conversation I've had is if we don't charge for uh, permits to do this, we still need a way to identify people that are approved to do these things. But 
have just been stopped at City Hall and picking up badges, different color badge. So when the police drive by, they know that uh, they are one of the people that's out soliciting. Essentially, the answer is you are able to regulate commercial speech. The more you infringe upon the, and it, and it all falls under the, the penumbra of the interstate commerce clause. So the more you focus on limiting or otherwise impacting the interstate commercial part of the commercial speech, the more you're going to run into potential issues. Um, so I will say, and I, and I told the mayor earlier, of uh, the points that have been added on here, the, the one that concerns me the most, which was the one that concerned me the most last time, is trying to limit, but to make a distinction between in-county businesses and out-of-county businesses. I think the more you do that, the more you are opening yourself up to a constitutional challenge. Now, realistically, how often are you to see a constitutional challenge? You are, by the definitions that you're utilizing and the things that you're trying to input with, with what we've received tonight, you have removed from that analysis the majority of the ones that are like the you know, organizations that are likely to bring a constitutional challenge. The majority of the instances that you see in the Supreme Court and at the the federal court level of constitutional challenges arise from an organization that is a nonprofit that is no longer able to go solicit for funds, or that they're not able to go and give their their materials. Um, but there is a significant interstate commerce provision and, and inclusionary um, you know, concern. So I, I know for a fact from the case law that setting a time limit, uh, number four, has been approved. Oh, yeah. Several of these things I think, I mean, I, no problem with revising the statute if it needs updating, making it, I mean, I know that the intent was that an itinerant was somebody from out of, out of the area, <coughs> out of the county, out of the city, that was a thing. <coughs> That's what it's meant by a tenant rather than a residential business. Yes. Supposed. That was uh, provided uh, solicitation or whatever. So uh, making the changes uh, and trying to clarify, I think that's, I think that's uh, uh, prudent and probably uh, timely. Um, you know, as I said, I know what we're trying to do, I just don't know if if we're not setting ourselves up for something else. Well, I, I think ultimately the proof, the proof may end up being, I, I yeah, we may have to do it. And we may have to do it and see, see what, what happens. How it happens, how it plays 
this out. I will say that from the from the perspective of the overarching concern that you have, which is a very valid public safety concern, which is the reason why you're considering doing this at all, um, you can certainly spell out in a modified ordinance or amended or, or ordinance that safety concern and address all of the things that are in here in a way that I think will pass constitutional muster. Yeah. You know, I passed out a little thing from back in 2009. And uh, the Saturday following our last council meeting, it was pretty nice weather on Saturday, and I was outside and I seen this young man going from house to house across 10th Street where I live. And uh, the first two houses, no one was at home. The third house, there was someone at home. So after the gentleman left, my wife called trying to set up a magazine subscription and uh, I knew they didn't have a permit to do so. So what he said was he pulled out a lot of cash, he said the two neighbors contributed, I'm trying to sell magazines to the college. Of course she didn't buy into it and neither one of the neighbors were home. So that's when I called the police station and um, basically they ran them off. Well where'd they go? And they ended up at this lady's house whose daughter had been molested in 09. So they just went from one area to, to the next instead of followed out of town, not the of duty, which they had been. They did not look for a permit. This situation here, this young man was selling magazines uh, to go to school, I guess, and uh, the molestation occurred and the guy has been sentenced and he's already back on the streets. But this did happen. So I checked to make sure that I had not signed a permit for him as well, and we hadn't. So they did it without any permits. So that's one of the reasons I've been pushing this so hard. That one makes it safer for people. And as you can see in, the, in what we have down here, is to support our local businesses where the people know the local businesses. Uh, you know, our businesses have uh, rooftops here, buildings that they pay taxes on. And we'd like to see them do well in their business. They do pay taxes, people walking from outside don't pay any. So I think everything we're trying to do here is to make it better for businesses as well as making it safer for the residents. And this is something that's, that's we're not going to act on tonight for a second meeting. It's something that I want everybody to think about for next month. <clears throat> if you have any changes, then I'm sure welcome. There, there was one thought I had on there. I think it's I printed it off. I apologize. I don't know if it might be work, but uh, there's a spot. I think the second bullet point now where it's talking about like, goods, merchandise. Uh, yeah. Uh, the last no. part is goods, merchandise, and something. Or, oh, on the original yeah. ordinance, yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering, should we add services to that as well? Probably. So you don't know, remember the tornado people came from out of town and asked people if they could give them quotes on their damage. <clears throat> they said sure. And a few weeks later they drove by and seen they didn't get the job. They stopped by and tried to collect from them. And the fine print was if we don't get the job, you owe us 10, 15, 20 percent. So how we got by that was according to the ordinance, they'd be fined two thousand dollars a day by the mayor. So if they didn't have one, that's many thousand dollars it's gonna cost them. And the ones who did have permits, but they bought them late, I was going to find them up to the date that they got their permit. So that discouraged them from uh, carrying through, charging the people 10 or 15 percent of the quotes, so called free quotes, the estimates.
for any more questions or comments what we're doing here. We've tried to get enough in writing for to finish out the ordinance for next month. And I'd like to say I welcome the council's opinions and your advice on it. So good to go. Gentlemen. Yes. Uh, how, yeah, we can. I mean, if if the council would like, I'm happy to take the input that you have garnered over your last couple of meetings and this input that you received from the chamber and redraft the ordinance in a way that I think is consistent with what you're <coughs> trying to do and distribute it to you so you can have it for your consideration for your next meeting. If you'd like me to do that, I think so. Sound good, gentlemen. Okay. <coughs> Next item on new business, elect council president. I'd like to nominate Jamie King. And second that. Daryl made the motion, late second, for discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. Thank you, gentlemen, it's unanimous. I abstain, I abstain. You're always abstaining. That's right. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, the next thing we have to do is designate a newspaper of 2015 officially. Uh, Greensburg Daily News. It was last year in Greensburg Times. We have two papers. I will make the motion that we designate the uh, Greensburg Daily News and the Greensburg Times as our designated newspaper for 2015. Second. Motion made by Darrell. Second. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. I vote that there. Okay. Including <laughs> Jamie. Gary Murray, Murray, city engineer. <laughs> Good evening. Um, in your package, you should have found uh, an ordinance to rezone two single-family properties on Lincoln Street. They're the second and third houses um, from the corner at First and Lincoln. Uh, Dr. Welland is here. Do you want to pass out your site plan? Um, this was not available when he came to in front of the Planning Commission, um, but the Planning Commission did vote by the members that were there unanimously to recommend this with a, a positive approval. Uh, there were two members absent at the meeting, but the five that were there was unanimous with those five to bring this ordinance for, before you to recommend the reason from R2 to B2. Question I would have, Gary, is there any concerns from any neighbors during the plan or proceeding? No, there was no neighbors that were present. The only two were people that were present were the folks that own the house that he's proposing to purchase. Yes. That was their opportunity, and as well as tonight, if he might like to speak up on that this ordinance. Was this a larger area than the first time? That's yes, he has added the, the two single family houses. The first time he had the single family house right there on the corner, yeah. and then the old doctor's office. Well, the folks that own the two rentals south of that first house had approached him, and he's able to kind of square the property up and do something a little nicer. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Uh, When you, when you look at the site plan, there's a detention pond in the back that's not squared in with the rest of the property. So one of the properties was like, I mean, I thought the old doctor's office. Old doctor's so office went further, further south than the three residential properties. But that's, the old doctor's office sits up in, in the, next to the first room. It does, but that property goes all the way back down to that retention pond. Oh. It is 
is a very long, narrow north-south project. Yeah, I can't see. <clears throat> Understood. Um, I, I see that there's a proposed a green space between the R2, the, the residential areas, uh, the main residential in that block, and, and uh, the proposed uh, doctor's office site, commercial B2 site. Um, what do you have in mind there, Tom? What are you talking about? The, the space between your uh, lot and the R2 area that sits west of you and, and south of you. West of the building. And where I'm, what I'm getting at is, <coughs> I, had, uh, I wasn't at the Planning Commission meeting, and I think I mentioned to you one of the things that I think is important for probably for you as well as for the neighbors is that there be some sort of a natural buffer, uh, some natural screen is what I guess I'd prefer, a cosmetic kind of screen in order that um, the residential area doesn't just <laughs> abruptly walk into a, a parking lot that they that you have some screening from, from their activities and they from, from you. Is that something that's yeah, Got I mean, in that's, mind? Um, that's something I can do. I mean, there's actually along the border there is a. It's very. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a uh, small little area along the border there that is kind of designated. But, yeah. Well, I guess. <coughs> yeah, I see that. There's. You got. I mean, I don't know what you. What you. I guess what I'm. What I'm looking for is is a commitment or a condition. And if I'd have been thinking stronger at the time when we did the initial one, I, I would have asked for that as part of the condition to, to make the change, that there be a, um, a natural screen, for lack of a better description, I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but um, in order to buffer the residential areas from the commercial area because that you're sitting in a, a spot where it was residential, so to speak, houses. Actually, that side was the doctor's office. No, I, I know. I'm not talking about, first year, I'm talking about between the west side of your property and along the south side of your property. How high, I guess I'm just wondering how high you're talking. Like, are you thinking like four foot hedges? Are you talking taller than that? Or? trying to picture in my mind. I guess I don't have a specific height. I'm thinking more some shrubs, some trees, something that would allow for a break between a uh, parking lot and commercial and, and daily kinds of activities <coughs> and the family's activities in the backyard. And if they can put it and then that's their business, I can put up a privacy sense or whatever too. I understand that, but I just think you know, we're imposing a dramatic change here to the to the neighborhood, so to speak. And it might be good to have, um, you know, and I, as I say, I think it'd also be helpful for, for your, in your best interest as well, to not have to rely on what's going on there, that you have some sort of a break as well. Uh, again, I, I don't have a, a specific, has to be so many feet apart. I, you know, I'm not trying to get it to be a, I'm not trying to prescribe it so heavily that it's unworkable. I'm just thinking in terms of trees, shrubs, that kind of thing that would allow for the brick and some protection. So with the site plan looking at it, the landscaping screen is written in site plan what what was your thought um you know I, I have no problem with putting some kind of you know, something I mean and I don't know what yeah you know, what standard or what what you're looking for I mean if it's 20 foot hedges all along no I, no no I, I have no problem putting something there I don't know what, what I, 
what, what might be better, Councilman Tebby, is this will have to come back before the plan commission. The site um, plan? Well, a site plan plus it's also the details. The details because it's a subdivision. He needs to replat this and get rid of all those interior lot lines. Oh, so, okay. and as part of that site plan approval, will be need to be a landscape plan. Okay. So we can hash those details, I think, right. out at right. staff and plan commission level, and, and get it taken care of that way. That'd be fine if we've got that opportunity. We do have that opportunity. <coughs> Okay. I'm quite sure Dr. Welch would do for his property if you lived next door. I know what you would. So yeah, I have trouble with. with I agree with you. Uh, Tom at all. I, it's just what comes next. Right, right. <laughs> right. So. I think it's a good question. And I would need to draw any more questions, Council. If there isn't, then I'd entertain a motion to vote on uh, or to approve rezoning ordinance 2015 1. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Now, do we want to suspend the rules and go for the second reading? I'll make a motion. Is it necessary? Is this something you want, Tom? Are you in a hurry to get this? Um, I don't need to know. Next, next month would be fine. I don't know. Yeah, I, let's, I, I would draw my motion. Okay. 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 Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, the old previous Johnson Wholesale building. You should have found in your packet a proposal from a, a company called Shrewsbury that does some environmental cleanup. <coughs> We have been working with the county. Um, they have been approached, as have we, about somebody that wanted to purchase this property. Um, some of the things that are not available to a private citizen would be brownfield cleanup funds, um, which we, we've been looking into. Um, but we, the city, actually has roughly $95,000 in this property already. Um, and so um, I know the folks who used to work with some of these people, so I approached them to get a cost of what it would take to hire uh, a company to remove the tanks, get the site cleared through IDEM, and ready for somebody to use and develop and get it back on the tax rolls. Um, that was $48,300, uh, which we thought was kind of high, but if somebody doesn't do it, it'll never get back on the tax rolls and nobody will ever want to do anything with it because of the liability with the, the uh, gasoline contamination. Here? Yes. So the tanks have to be removed, not filled anymore? Yes, they need to be removed. They need to be... No, they used to fill them, didn't they? Sand or something to grab over? They don't let them do that anymore because the old tanks, they're not double walled and they rust and then you end up having more contamination so in order for most tanks now IDEM requires that they be removed. Mm -hmm. okay. Where is the exact location of this? It is just east of Thames. Okay. It's, it's a gravel lot where a lot of people are parking, or parking stuff right now. My only concern is where we have nearly 100,000 invested. Um, there's county tax and city tax both paid on that property, and it will be in the future as well as they think it's built. Um, we've got a lot of different taxing entities, but does the county not have anything invested in this, or should they not have anything invested? Should it be up all to the city simply because we have an unsafe building ordinance to follow? That we have to absorb all the cost. Yeah, I checked. Um, they had insurance on the bill. No, what did they have insurance on here? They had insurance on him as a contractor or whatever business he did, but they did not have property insurance. Property insurance. There's so. never been any insurance in that building, as far as we could find any place. The research was done. If we could have found someone, some insurance company, 
they could be liable, held liable for uh, cleaning up the site. That's point eight three, but just such as the old uh, senior center. You mentioned you've been working with the county. What is what, what is doing for that? You've been trying to get what you were saying. You're trying to get the county. They're to willing to give us the property deeded over to us from the commissioners uh, aspect. They can give us the property. But then, do we want the property if it's not cleaned up? Do they own it now? No, the property owner still owns it, but there's $250,000 in arrears. But kind of it. It's not sold on two consecutive sheriff sales. Tax sales. Tax sales. So, so the county can place. <clears throat> yes, and they're willing to do that uh, at no cost to the city, but we've already paid for the deed and abstract we paid the them. We paid $125 to find out if who we have to notify if we do intend to take that. <coughs> if if we end up the county takes the property for lack of taxes and feeds it to the city, then the city could sell. Yes. After, so after we after clean it, clean it up, I understand, right. but we, we might get recouped. and we could make a little we might bit of money. Either maybe the forty-eight thousand, are they part of it, or some of the other two? I don't know what the value of that property be as well as deals and square was worth. We're willing to pay a certain amount for it, and and there probably are one or two people who might have some interest in it. I would want the value to be the property. Is it worth five thousand? Is it worth thirty thousand or forty thousand? So the reason that you are investigating this was because somebody has expressed an interest or do you just speculate? Someone has expressed an interest in it now how far that would go, I don't know. But to dispose of it I believe would be required to do an appraisal. Yes. And then either receive bids and if nothing matched the appraisal then we could put it up for auction. Yes. And it would take a long time to on taxes, what investment we have in demolishing that building and, and taking cleaning it up. But yeah, well, if we don't do something, it's never going to be good for anything. It's probably been 10 years old. We tore it down in 09, 10, at least before I got here. So it was then. seven or eight. So maybe right away. <clears throat> well, it's going to probably just be an eyesore and maybe keep it used as, I guess, parking lot or whatever. <laughs> That's about it then. I, we don't have that much tax paid okay, on that right now. There's no tax coming around. Right and I, and I'm, I'm torn on this, this subject, but whatever the council decides is what I'm going to do. I mean, well, what's your preference? I wish the county would pay the other four yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, So that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> so it's left up to us. If we don't do something, probably nothing will ever be done. It'll be like that for ages. How big is that long here? I don't know exactly. Probably three the other thing is, you know, an environmental responsibility almost that you know, that those tanks still do have petroleum in them. They're not emptied. They're potential for a lot further contamination than it could get in the groundwater. So, we just weren't sure which way to take it, and that's why we thought we'd ask you. In terms of how we pay for that? So you're looking at our say, building fund, or what? we don't have much there. I don't think you think waiting there because I we, I loaned them thirty thousand dollars to have something to operate on when it broke us between that building there and one the South Broadway it broke us and it's gone. And uh, I would suggest taking out a rainy day or gambling money. At least it'd be back on the books and it'd be cleaned up. Well, I mean, that's 
part of our responsibility, I guess, is to look out for the town of Pitt, and as you're saying, I think there's, there's liability there, not directly, but indirectly. I don't have a reason to say that we shouldn't. It's one of those things that, for well, the cost of business, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. part of business. Yeah. not making any money now. So, Vote from us then? I, I would like to. Uh, is, is that a motion to approve expenditure of $48,000 out of rainy day to be applied to the clean I was trying to build a consensus on the council before <laughs> I made the motion. Uh, trying to find out from the mayor what it really was his intent. We're trying to, I was trying to just figure out I know. where people were. Well, I got to go to bed. <laughs> so do I, brother. When they build a new building there and you collect fifteen hundred two thousand dollars in property tax and there are six entities with their hands in the tax money, it doesn't go very far on the city side. No. It'll never be paid in all of our years of our age. Yeah, they together. would never recoup the taxes either. No. But you know what? But I can see in a new building there. In terms of in terms of taking care of people around it who are paying taxes in terms of taking care of stewardship of this land that we're given responsibility for at this point in time. You know, I'm not I'm not happy about it, but you know, we're it's, no, it's, a right it's, thing it's like when a when a storm comes, a storm comes and you got it you gotta spend the money to clean it up. Well we didn't create the storm and we didn't create the problem, but somebody's gotta be adult enough and Take care of it. Okay. That's my perspective, and I'm eager to hear what my colleagues think. I, and I'm not saying that that has to be that way. I'm speaking out, letting you know what my thoughts are. I'm talking aloud, trying to come to some collective wisdom here. What the right thing to do is. So it can be done in this administration, or it can be pushed off to the other. I mean, so it, I think it's it's got to be taken care of now. Or ten administrations from now. Or ten right. <laughs> Just research. The only thing I think that we need to make clear if we make a motion and we, we say we're going to do that is we need to get like a written commitment from the county that they will sign. Oh, they do. They've already done a resolution. Okay. There you go. Okay. We, we did have to follow through, but they have done a resolution. Okay. We, and you know, last. And that way we can recoup some of the money at least. Some. Yes. At least it'd be something and there'll be a building there someday. You know, it's just it's hard to give up another forty-eight thousand three hundred dollars when we've already nearly got a hundred thousand invested now. But like you say, it's something we need to do. So I guess well, I'm sorry. I just say we're just spinning our wheels. <coughs> we can make a decision. I would move that we moving that we authorize forty-eight thousand. <coughs> Three hundred dollars out of rainy day fund to take care of the property located in 120 West Railroad. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you, Council. The NR trail grant. Um, over the past two years, we have applied. Uh, for a $150,000 trail grant from DNR. The first year we were, turn, were turned down. Uh, second year we massaged that proposal a little bit, resubmitted it, and were awarded a $150,000 grant for a trail to go from on the north side of Baruchel at Nightingale over to the trail that the county put in um, on Hitachi's property. So, Right now, we can use that for acquisition of easements or design, and we're looking to go out and talk to people about doing design, and we'll end up figuring out how much this is once plans are fully developed, but we've got a general idea of the scope um, <coughs> of what the project's gonna entail, because um, we had to submit that much for <coughs> the grant application, so. We are in the process, um, don't know, I don't think it will cover the entire project cost. Um, I'm sure we'll probably be back in the future looking for a way to offset whatever the final cost is from what 
grant funds are available, but just wanted to make everybody aware of that, that that will be coming down the pike at some point in the future. I, I intend on going out for solicitation of contributions. <laughs> 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 those little <laughs> so that, that's really all that item entails. So um, more to follow in the future. Yes. We have to amend our ordinance and include uh, as an exemption mayor. <laughs> or beggar. Beggar. <laughs> okay, next item, Gas Creek, new mapping and flood. This is really just another update. Uh, when we did the Gas Creek project, um, once that was completed, this body authorized $105,000 to prepare new mapping and try to get that through FEMA to be approved. Uh, we have reached the first hurdle. We have made that through and it's been approved by DNR. Now they have their letter with our submittal and the package went to FEMA at the end of last month. So it's somewhere around a 12 to 18 month approval process through the federal government, but we are making progress. So just wanted to let everybody know where that was. You're welcome. Yes, thanks, sir. Next item, Councilman O'Mara. It's uh, been brought to my attention and we're talking with some of the members from the TLC that they have done their uh, part of the bargain and, and went out and raised quite a bit of funds. Um, and we had uh, committed monies if there was a match. At this point, there's not been a match from uh, the county. But I thought it would be nice to kind of see or hear their business plan, um, what you guys have done, and if this body would be able to help. Um, Mr. Hipskin, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Herbert. I appreciate that. Good evening to you. Well, we were here about five months ago, and um, uh, it was discussed at that point to do one-third of the fundraising of our goal of $120,000 at that point, and um, um, the city had said that they could do 40, and hopefully the county could do 40. That was the initial discussion that night. Uh, we have uh, pledges and, and money on hand right now of 65000 that we have uh, generated to this point. Um, uh, the county has, um, um, we've been in discussion with them a few different times we've appeared at their board meetings and uh, uh, those discussions are not over but at the same time we, they, they said they did not have the funds at that time uh, to contribute. Um, we have at this, at this point have some plans put together. Uh, we shared those plans initially with you. Uh, to go ahead and start the remodeling process as soon as we can. And uh, we're at a point with St. Mary's uh, purchasing the building there to um, to get this thing rolling. We were hoping to get in before winter, and uh, at the same time, we're, we're just happy to be able to be still be on, on course to get in there as soon as possible, hopefully this spring. So uh, business plan-wise, we are, uh, I think, not ahead of schedule. Of course, uh, but at this, but we are we're we're on a good pace. Well, um, I, I think that you've shown the, the due diligence that we expected that you would do, and um, lived up really to what we had hoped would be at least your part of the bargain. Thank you. And um, you know, from my I, from my perspective, I think. The project is worthwhile. It's something that would be um, a benefit to the community, and I think I would like to see us amend our motion to uh, grant the forty thousand at this time, uh, this month, and so they can uh, finalize purchase uh, and/or make other plans to to uh, access the building and, and get it ready for utilization. I'm still in hopes. Uh, maybe my initial hope was that our 
effort would prompt the, um, the county to, to do likewise. Um, ever the optimist, I hope that if we agree to make the, the uh, grant tonight, uh, that that grant would <laughs> spur some in the county to uh, reconsider and, and do their do something also to help bring about this uh, reality for this. So um, that's my thought. I, I would like to see us move forward. I don't know what other members here think, but that's just my, just my thought, Glenn. I, I I hear what you're saying, but I think if we go forward and we give them the money tonight. What incentive does a county have to contribute? This is truly a community project. It truly involves the city and the county. And I think and if we go ahead and give that money, we're not pushing the county to help out at all. The county has an easy out. No. And I think we need to stay, stand where we're at and just say we're not going to give the money until the county commits to give money as well. And if the county doesn't commit, then they don't truly support this community project either. And that's not just on us. I think they have to show the support. To say the money's not there is untrue. So I think they have to step up and show the, show the commitment. By not not supporting it with their money, their actions are saying they don't commit, they don't support the project. I hear what that's you're their saying. Actions. I hear what you're saying, and I, and I think that we've tried that route, and it hasn't worked. Um, I think that by putting the 40000 in now, it does give them the opportunity to move forward, it will demonstrate the project is going to go forward, and maybe maybe that will be enough to spur them. And if it doesn't, maybe it'll be enough to spur other good people, goodwill around to do uh, additional donations, other people coming forward because leadership has been taken by the city and by them primarily. To, uh, to make this happen. So I think by giving this, we are making a statement and we, I think we are encouraging people to, uh, to step forward. Whether the county does or not, I guess that's their decision. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that the county council has been the one that they've been dealing with. I'm hoping that uh, the commissioners, through their own uh, discretion and, and resources, will we'll find a way to, to be supportive of, of this from the county perspective. So I hear what you're saying. I, I think that we I think we've tried that uh, for several months and it hasn't proven anything. Uh, to continue to do that just delays the implementation of this and by us going <coughs> forward leading, I think we can get implementation going. I think that will be a sign that other people will follow. But I, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I, I just, I don't agree with you at all. I don't think it's going to spur the county to support the project. I think if we delay until they commit, that's the only thing that they're going to have to help persuade them. And if this delays the project, then it's on the county. It's delaying the project. It's a community project. And if they're not going to support it, then we shouldn't take all that burden. We have to be good stewards of the money that we're, we're subject to handle here. And I think that if we go through and we pay all that money and the county has no support, we're not being good stewards of the money. We, we are not. I think we're being careless and we've given them an easy out. That's my personal opinion and I would not agree to, to support this project if the county does not support it. But it's not dead with the county yet. Well, and, and I'm not saying we, we rescind what we've already approved, but I'm not saying that we change it either. We, Hold, hold fast to where we're at, and our previous motion basically stated the county had to commit forty thousand as well. Correct? Yes. So we're not going to we're not going to commit more money than the county is going to commit in this project. I think it, it shows a bad investment if we do otherwise, and if it delays the project, it delays the project. But it's a community project. It's they have to support that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, and if they don't, then I don't think that we should either. I think the project has its own merits. Absolutely. Whether or not the county sees those merits is another story. So I'm saying that if we see merit in something, we ought to follow through on it. That's my point. 
obviously I didn't, uh, I, I abstained from voting, uh, which I will uh, abstain from voting again tonight because of conflict of interest. But uh, obviously I support this project and I'm not trying to sway any of the council. I'm just saying uh, in, in response to what Jamie is saying here, uh, I think if there's any losers, it's the people who would benefit from this project if we don't move forward with it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I, I think it's a worthy project. But again, I, I will have to abstain. If I might interject one comment. Sure. Um, regardless of the timing of what the county does, uh, the project's going to happen. And the confidence that um, we have in this community, in this county, the people, the confidence that we have in the people here, uh, it's really been shining through. And, and we've seen that. Uh, in the fundraising phase that we've gone through the last several months of raising 65000 to this point, that's not going to stop. And should the county check not come through, uh, and I believe it will, but if it does not come through, then um, rest assured we still feel very confident in the people of this community in this county. I, I think that uh, uh, it's going to happen. Keith, is there any other revenue source that's committed besides the pledges? No, uh, we, we are uh, uh, in contact with banks. We are in contact with um, um, grant raising, uh, writing grants. And so there are some other avenues that we're, pers we're continuing to work through. We have uh, been, um, as we were asked to do, go and speak to the different organizations in town. And a few of them have verbally committed um, um, responses. So to this point, we, uh, we see that we're still going to continue to, to make that climb. We're projecting right now about $64,000 in remodeling. Uh, once we get the facility to make it safe, make it um, uh, very um, functional and effective for all the different uh, people that we have in there. So um, we've, we're, we still got a long ways to go.